Hello comic fans, today we'll discuss one of the most notoriously dangerous weapons in the whole galaxy. The plasma caster from the Predator universe. The shoulder mounted, blue plasma spitting, and sincerely, the most iconic weapon in sci-fi universe history. Imagine Iron Man's shoulder repulsor had a baby, with a high precision enemy tracking sniper. And that baby was brought up and nurtured by the infamous Yautja. Yes, that's how ruinous this weapon is. But do you know there are different kinds of these shoulder cannons? One for each purpose. And despite being so catastrophically destructive, y'all just still consider it the least honorable weapon. Want to know why? Well, hang in there as we take you through everything we know about this iconic Predator tech. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is the Plasma Caster? We all remember the 1987 movie, when the jungle hunter blew up the mercenaries one by one with the plasma cannon fixed on its shoulders, spitting neon blue energy bullets. Once the Yaucha has aimed at its target, this means the machine keeps tracking its prey until it changes to the next one. We've seen how the three laser red lights fall on each target, helping the device to fix its game. And once it's done, no matter whether the target moves or tries to flee, there's no way out. There's no doubt that the bio helmet controls the shoulder mounted plasma caster, and as it appears, there are other methods, such as controlling it from the wrist gauntlet. Also, the shoulder-mounted cannon is just one of the few versions we've seen. There's also the handheld version, like a plasma gun. And there are many different power or destructive ranges by which the plasma can be fired, apparently by charging it before each strike. From intimidating or engaging the enemy, to fully decapitating it in a single blast, the control is entirely in the hands of the Yautja. Hang in there as we delve into the many different kinds of plasma casters and tell you how they differ. What is the classic plasma caster used by most predators? To begin with, the classic plasma caster is the one we saw in the 1987 movie and many other movies that followed. The simplest version, single barrel, no fancy multi-purpose scanners like the ones we'll soon see. Controlled by the bio helmet, as simple as it is, it's also robust and highly efficient at turning its targets into a pile of ash and charred bones. This technology ensures that once the target is locked, evasion is impossible. We've also seen that this one has rechargeable capability, allowing the Yaucha to control its power range and making it the Yaucha's basic assault weapon. What makes the Omnicaster a versatile upgrade? The next upgrade to this basic model is the Omnicaster. And what makes it different is A, its multi-barrel, B, the attached bioscanner, and C, the three different plasma setups. When the classic plasma caster is blunt force, an Omnicaster is tactical dominance. This one allows the Yaucha to target more complicated and sophisticated life forms, such as the Xenomorph, Deacon, or even a Queen. The attached bioscanner helps the Predator determine what form of plasma is best suited to tear its enemies off. And the three different Different plasma types are A, burst plasma, similar to the classic burst, B, flame plasma, you guessed it, to set its target on fire, and C, dark plasma, that triggers an energy reaction that disintegrates the target at the atomic level, like getting warped inside a black hole. For obvious reasons, this one is carried around by more veteran predators who have traveled the universe and faced many different hostile life forms, which explains its adaptive, destructive quality. We've seen them in games like Predator, Hunting Ground, and many comics, but have yet to see them in a feature film. What is unique about the Celtic's Plasma Caster? The next one in their arsenal is the Celtic Plasma Caster, the mega-sized cannon on the shoulder. The fans would know it for their favorite AVP movie of 2004, but not the one that Celtic, the Yautja carried, as the name suggests, but the one held by Scar, the smartest and strongest among the three siblings, who ended up killing a xenomorph and many other creatures, and even a queen with the help of Lex Wood. Celtic Plasma Caster is more like a shotgun, which is heavily packed and looks massive on his shoulders, and undoubtedly it would have delivered heavier plasma Lasts. With this one, the Predator is not left to have a one-on-one -on -one fight, but it's more like a one-shot game over weapon. How powerful is the Chopper's Plasma Caster? Another interesting variant is the massive cannon that Chopper carried on his shoulder in the 2004 AVP movie. Chopper, one of the three Youngblood Yautja, mostly used his elongated wrist blades, sticking to their trademark honor system, by confronting an enemy with a primitive, less sophisticated weapon. Though we didn't get to see this massive Plasma Caster being used, we've frequently seen them in other and action figure merchandise that depict him with this mega weapon. The variant can instantly vaporize an enemy with its railgun beam. Hope we get a look at this terrible terrifying weapon in action soon.
What is the plasma pistol and how does it work? And then comes the more mobile version of the cannon, the plasma pistol. You've probably seen this in AVP Requiem, and it pops up in a bunch of comics and games too. Remember that badass scene where Wolf, the veteran predator, rips off his busted shoulder cannon and turns it into a handheld blaster? Yeah, that's the one. Now, these plasma pistols can either be made from the classic shoulder cannon, or built as a dedicated handheld weapon with different power settings. The catch? They usually don't have all the cool features the big ones do, like auto-targeting or tracking systems. But if you're a skilled predator, especially in tight up-close fights like a city or a concrete jungle, this thing would still wreck everything in sight. When do predators use the energy flechette? The next kind is the energy flechette, which is literally a small version of the shoulder-mounted weapon, but this one is seen integrated into their wrist gauntlet. Seen in movies such as Predator 2 and Predator Nemesis, this is a last resort kind of thing that a Yaucha would use when no other weapons are accessible to them. This is mostly because of their shorter range and low impact capability compared to the different versions. However, it's still a plasma gun and can devour flesh and cause serious damage, if it could hit the target. But other features like auto-target and tracking function are are not available. Still, the three-point laser light could come in handy to target the enemy, provided the target is not a small and fast-moving body. What sets the Super Predator's Plasma Caster apart? And the next is kind of the ultimate Plasma Caster. When a Yaucha gets older and stronger, it needs a weapon that matches its strong reputation, and that's the Super Predator Plasma Caster. Unlike the heavy shoulder-mounted cannon, built for blunt force, this advanced machine is sleeker, compact, and built for speed and precision. Unlike the static classic cannon, this one folds and hides itself within the Yaucha armor and pops out in times of action. And what makes it revolutionary is its revolving barrel feature, which helps the Super Predator fire multiple rounds and gives a 360 degree firing range, so it's more like a mega assault rifle, designed to launch deadly plasma blast streams. The same machine is used by Berserker in the 2010 Predator movie, seen firing at Royce, played by Adrian Brody. How does the Biohelmet Plasma Caster auto-fire? Another version that should be mentioned is the Biohelmet Plasma Caster, or a relatively smaller cannon that is attached to the helmet itself. It was seen just once with the Fugitive Predator, the human Yautja hybrid seen in the 2018 movie. The fans were startled to see the weapon's auto-detect, auto-fire setup when the boy was assaulted from behind. The helmet has an auto-defense mechanism that protects the wearer, and that's truly dazzling. Though the plasma bullet looks smaller, its impact was big enough to rock the two-storied house. Besides, the human Yautja Hybrid's weapon of choice can't be that bad. What is the wrist cannon and why is it different? The last version would be the wrist cannon. This is more like the energy flechette mentioned earlier in this video. You got it right, the tiny cannon attached to their wrist gauntlet. Except this one is not small or a weaker counterpart used as a last resort kind of weapon. The wrist cannon is as strong and destructive as the classic plasma caster, carrying as much firepower. The only negative is the lack of auto aiming and tracking features. But rest assured, in the hands of a battle strengthened veteran, this weapon could do some serious damage. It can even hit a small fast moving target. Another Another noteworthy mention is the double plasma caster seen in the 2007 AVP movie. The seasoned predator Wolf is seen armored with one plasma caster on each shoulder. No doubt this is a powered up version that showcases a significant evolution in Yaucha weaponry, adapted for increased firepower. Surely this is made for more challenging enemies like a Predalien. Plasma caster is definitely an unavoidable weapon in the predator arsenal and on their hunting trips. The compatibility, advanced targeting tech, and the modular design give it the edge. Even if the predator has to turn around and run away. If the target is locked, the plasma caster will keep firing, in the chosen pulse mode and power level. But this stunning weapon also comes with a major drawback. The plasma caster is linked to the biomask for its flawless functioning, but by chance, if the mask is torn off or damaged, the many functions would be disabled, giving its enemies a good dent in its offensive mechanism. But surely the Yaucha engineers had thought well about this beforehand, so they could just take the cannon on their shoulders and turn it into a shotgun. They're undoubtedly far superior in both killing instincts and survival skills. How was the Plasma Caster designed for the movies? What changed in the Plasma Caster for Alien vs Predator? Bringing this amazing weapon to life has always been a big challenge for movie makers. The weapon design and making evolved over time, as we explored on our deep dive into the culture and civilization of the Yauchas. In the original Predator movie, the Jungle Hunter carried a sleek and compact version of the Plasma Caster. This more classic version was controlled by the Biomask, with advanced tracking and targeting features. But for the Predator's 2004 movie, director Paul W.S. Anderson wanted the 
Gaucho to be more gigantic and ginormous in size when standing against men. This surely gave the viewers the creeps and terror. This also meant that the plasma caster had to be built differently in size and detail. Concept artist Joseph C. Pepe did an amazing job here, bringing in minute design details that depicted functionality and illustrated the sophistication and robustness of the weapon. He created weapons of different sizes, including large, medium, and original, to show the different caliber sizes, giving a whole new dimension to the Predator's intelligence and engineering. The fans could immediately realize that the bigger size was not just blunt power, but it showcased intricate purposes and multi-level functioning. Amalgamated Dynamics Inc., a visual effects company specializing in animatronics and prosthetic makeup, brought these designs to life. The same company that worked on special effects on the Alien franchise and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. These Academy Award winners created the most visually and functionally perfect weapons for the bigger Yauchas, and they weren't just static, but involved realistic movements with animatronics, depicting the sophistication and the advanced technology of the Pioneer Predators. Marvelous verdict. So to sum it up, Yaucha have never been presented without a plasma caster. It's their basic defensive weapon, and they have enough versions of all sizes to carry it with them. But the truth is, an honorable Yaucha would still consider any of his weapons less honorable. Yeah, you heard that right. Yaucha are the deadliest predators in the universe, designed to kill and dominate. Though they have some of the best alien technology in the galaxy, like stealth cloaks, plasma spitters, or the self-destructing nukes, they still consider a weaponless one-on-one -on -one close combat the best. Why? Because they're paragons of honor, and honor matters more than anything else to them. We have yet to discover much about their technology, from the gauntlet operating system to their mothership traveling the galaxy. Fans can hardly wait for the Badlands movie, scheduled to release in November 2025. The seventh film of the mainline series has promised a different narrative, maybe that of a predator protagonist, and the fans are also hoping to get a sneak peek at more of their advanced tech. We can't wait to uncover and share more of Predator secrets, so hang in there and subscribe for the next video. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.